Pedro from EMP Reacts. I'm here today with Kevin Muller from Alluvial to talk about sarcoma out May 28th on Nuclear Blast. How's it going? It's going fantastic. Weather's getting good. Music's coming out soon. I couldn't be more excited. Man, I'm so jealous of your of your of your crib. I'm, I'm super <laughs> jealous right now. It's a facade. Outside what the camera sees, shit's a mess. I, I thought you were going to say it's a, it's a green screen behind me. <laughs> yeah, imagine I just knock it over and it's just all plywood and just all like metal bars. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. let's talk about Sarcoma. Let's talk about this record. And the first question that I have for you is, how did the creative process start for you guys leading up to this album? Uh, I mean, I have to give it to Wes on this one. The creative process is literally his brain. I mean, I, I know with this album, when me and Wes got to, got together uh a lot of like what do you think should go here what do you think should do like what what do you want to put into this he kept coming to me for like what do you want to put in for lyrics and i kind of was honest and i was just like i don't know like i'm i'm new to this with you and i know you've had so much of this already that i feel like this album is your message right like you're already put so much into it i would hate that it's like so much of the songs have such depth of his life and his experiences that i would hate to come in and muddy up a song with like kill them all fucking blah. you know like i don't want to really? make it so generic and i didn't I, I i couldn't fuse with you know some of the things we were doing and i didn't i just didn't want to make i didn't want to bring it down at all so i kind of was like hey look i want the, i think it'll sound sharper and more like to the point if like your directive vision on this was for this record and Honestly, I'm glad it's the way it is. I love the record. I, I can't wait to show everybody. Uh, where do you see the biggest growths uh, as a band as you move from one record to this album now? Uh, I mean, I'll tell you this. This is my first one with the band. The, the one prior is an instrumental. So, I mean, the whole band is, in a sense, recreated since this point. So, like, there was member changes, and it was just Wes alone at one point. And then we he he got me, and we rebuilt uh, I'm the first vocalist of the band. So like the band was always intended to have a vocalist, never really came to, you know, the, to light, but now it's here. And now it's kind of like, you know, same thing with streaming setups. It's like, it's all here. Now we can make it look the way we wanted it to, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, we're very excited. You know, I think what makes this different than the previous album is, I guess that's an answer I can provide is uh, we all come from different paths of music and metal and, different avenues. Like I, I came from, you know, fresh out of suffocation and that was, you know, I, I, my background is very much brutal death metal and hardcore and stuff. And Wes is more from, you know, the faceless and his more technical roots. Tim is from Entheos. Uh, Matt, our drummer, Matt Paluzzo is he, he, he was in decrepit birth, but he's also in the Zines passage. And he kind of shares the understanding of both the tech and both the brutal, but also in the middle, both like the, the inspirations that we all share like in the middle we all love pantera we all love like alice in chains but we also love surruption and cannibal corpse <laughs> and and it kind of like in all of us we have this like hive mind sound that like you know when someone like a guitarist can give you a riff and be like isn't this sick and everyone in the room's like it could use some work but uh sure you know but we <laughs> haven't had that yet you know what i mean everything has been like Oh, we all see the same picture. And I think that's what makes this band special for me, at least I could say that. I, and I think in the group chat that we have, we all feel the same way. Well, what were the biggest challenges that, that you guys were faced with during the recording process of the album? I think it was really just a matter of location. We're all in different places. You know, Matt is out there in New Mexico. Tim is in Texas. I'm in Long Island, New York, and Wes is in Georgia. So we do a lot of traveling. And I think just doing this through the pandemic time, was the probably the biggest crutch but it was a matter of like all right can you come up no can we do this no uh but it was a matter of i was able to get down there thankfully to do the songs uh but i know west did the tracking for both the um guitars the bass uh we had someone else do the drums uh but everything's been reworked and matt worked his way in as well so it's all natural it's all real it's all good it's all fucking clobbering so i'm 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 stoked. So all, all, with all our, you could say, hard times or the difficulties of getting this album, there really hasn't really been any, knock on wood. Mm -hmm. do, do you see this album uh, being defined by the quality of the individual songs or by the strengths of the collective? Strength of the collective by far. 
So I think it's what my favorite thing so far about this band is that like, because I came from more of a death metal background, uh, I was always like selfishly curious of like, what are people going to think with me on this record? You know, like what are, how are people going to not, not in terms of my reputation, but it's more of just like how, what are people expecting seeing my name on the record are they, before they hear a song? Do they think that, that we went to metal? Do they think I went more technical? Like I like ha having this little bit of mystery. Um, but with, we dropped Ulysses. And then people were like, okay, it's a cool song. It's sick. It's heavy. It's, you know, it's got, you know, a, a nice calm flow to it. And then we put out Thy Underling. And then people were like, oh, okay. They're not, they're not just doing one thing. Okay, cool. So it is more technical metal. And then we drop 40 stories and they're like, and it's like, boom. Yeah. They're like, what the, they're like, what are they doing? But it's working. And, and it's not over. Like every, I will say every song in this record sounds different. And I, I think to me, that's, that's my favorite part. And that's why I ask you that question, because when you have an album with this much diversity from top to bottom, sometimes the album ends up living off of the quality of the individual tracks because they're so different from each other yeah. versus the strength of the collective, because sometimes the album feels a little bit broken. You mm. feel like there's a disconnect from track to track. I didn't feel that no, on the I, album. I think and, and we surprising. spent a lot of time. We spent a lot of time on like just track order. Like, all right, so like, you know, we end on 40 stories, right? Like, how do you feel at the end of 40 stories? You're kind of just sitting there like, whoa, like that was a big sound, right? And then going right into zero and the creepy sounds and it starts building this whole new like aura of like shock value. And then the song after that, it's just a beater, you know? And, and like, we want it to be like a show experience, you know? Like it's different when you see a band and they play five songs in a row that all sound the same. Mm -hmm. It's cool when a band plays one thing like slow jam and then they hit you with a fast beater after it's like oh shit now the party's back like i like the the constant like you know we're like water you know so it's yeah, it's and, nice and, it's a really nice flow and, and i think this album definitely does that because it doesn't feel stagnant at any point in time it, it's always moving the needle one way or another so for the listener it's a constant barrage but mm -hmm. it's, but you're not getting hit at the same spot by the same fist all the time do you know what i mean right like, you're, right, you're, right, you're kind right. Of getting hit from coming from different places, so you kind of, it's hard for you to to gather yourself. So you said you guys spent some time on the track listing. Was it a difficult, considering the diversity of songs that you guys have, to to find a path that works for the record as a whole, but at the same time doesn't take anything away from the quality of the individual songs? Yeah, no, I I think there was a point where we were me, me and Wes were kind of back and forth, like mm, like like we would set it up one way let it sit for a week and not touch it and then come back to it and listen to it the way it is and be like, Hmm, I felt really good after this song. Maybe if we did this, like think we started putting like a show in our mind, you know, like, wouldn't it be crazier if this came out after it? You know what I mean? Cause it'd be sick for us to even play a show with this set list just from front to back. I think that would be smooth, but I do like thinking about the different types of listeners that are going to be listening to this record. Right. Like for, for, you know, metalheads, they love just give me a blast beat, give me a slam, give me a thing, and I'm I'm content. So they're gonna they're gonna hunt around the album for those things. That's a <laughs> that's a specific type of listener. But then you have the other side, and that's what I think is big for this band is you have other people that really want to be hit with something new or hit with something refreshing with all different emotion and like every song is about a deep, dark like thing, you know, whatever that dark cloud is over you in that in those lyrics. It's like one storm after the one one storm after another. So I think it really translates really well, and I, I think both both types of listeners are going to be very pleased. When I got the press release and I'm looking at it and I'm like, death metal album, uh, you know, it, to kind of paint the picture going into the record. So at least you kind of set yourself in terms of what you're going to listen to. Right. Once I press play, that that label of death metal couldn't be further from, I mean, it's not far from the truth, but it doesn't really paint the full picture of what the band is and what Sarcoma is all about. I mean, right. there's a lot of and diversity. It shouldn't. But I think, but I think that's the best part is that it shouldn't. You shouldn't understand what a band is full about, fully about in the first three riffs. And I think that's what makes you like you invest into it and then you'll get it right. So like think about all these bands that come out as full brutal death metal bands for the first two, three records. And then they want to try to change anything. That fourth record is going to be a really rough release for them because now they've set a standard for what they're able to do. And now their fans are so like, like, you know, set in their ways. And it's so hard to break down that wall where what if you came out saying like, look, these are our inspirations. This is what we love. This is what we love doing. And you're going to, we're going to put our best 
qualities of ourselves into the genres we love. And you're going to hear all of our inspirations in one rec in one record. Boom. So now we're not held to any sort of crutch next record. We can drop a full brutal death metal record next album and no one's going to bat an eye. We could mm -hmm. put out a ballad next record and no one's going to bat an eye. It's just, we like having that like freedom in it. And I I'm, I'm excited for whatever comes next. And I'll tell you right now, just even after this was all done, Wes was all like on a high and I was staying at his house still for a few extra days. And we were talking about like, Hmm, let's write another riff for a thing, dude. It's just chunky death metal and like certain songs just, just stabbed. And then it goes into more progression and stuff, but it's, it's sick, you know? Said. You see, you, you, we talked about the structure of the album, the impact that that has on the record, but you also feel like perhaps the length of the album itself adds to the overall playability of the record. I, I didn't feel like this is one of those albums that by the time you reach the end, you're like, oh, I need a break. Like I'm, I'm, I'm spent. Like I yeah. need a break before I go back at it again. I felt that the combination of the structure of the album, the track listing and the length of the record itself made this album even more playable when you get to the end you want to press play again and go for another ride it's like if you right. go on, on on a ride and you had a blast and you're like you by the time you finish you're telling your buddies hey let's go back for another one because this was yeah. fun it's, it's like a movie it's like there, yeah. there's some things you missed maybe you know it's it's kind of like you're getting hit with it in this fresh tone right this fresh like you know reaction state right and then you're going back to it going like now you know what to expect and you're you're honing in on the little things, the little, the, uh, you know, um, what's the word I want? Uh, I almost said seance, but that's not the word I want. You know, <laughs> why the hell is that the word that's coming out of my brain? Uh, but uh, nuances, the little nuances uh, between like, you know, Wes's playing style is, you know, one in its own. You know, him alone on the previous record and this record is just something to that shines by itself. Now you have you know, Matt's playing style. Now you have Tim slapping bass on this. Now you have me barking at you, but also with Wes singing at you. So it's like, we're hitting you in all different angles. So you can fixate on one thing and still enjoy the record. You know, it's not so much like brutal shit where, you know, it's just chugs and then the vocals sound cool and the vocals are holding the, the weight of the whole album, you mm -hmm. know? And then you take one of those elements away. It's not going to be the same thing where I think for us, we can put this out as an instrumental record. It'll just, it'll hit you just the same way. Yeah. I, I think it's an album that you can deconstruct it into all the different pieces that make the record, uh, listen to the album, honing in on one of those pieces every single time, and then mm -hmm. bring it all together and listen to it, to the album as it is without having Absolutely. to focus on one in, on one individual part of it. And I think that's, what's the beauty about this album. That's what blew me away about this record is it I, I didn't feel like, once you listen to it once, that's it. Like you've, you've discovered everything that there is there to be discovered on the record. This album yeah. is like, there's an Easter egg always hidden somewhere every time you play it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think uh, there's a lot. That, I mean, I've been listening to this record now just alone in the shower <laughs> for, for, for like a year now or, you know, good part of, good part of a year. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm fantasizing about people's reactions, whether it be alive. Like I kind of start imagining a festival, you know, and just seeing what, what people freak out to, like what in their face is going to change when a thing happens. Like there's a part in um, one of the tracks where Wes, it just does this nasty fucking, wah, like a, a dime bag squeal kind of thing. And it's just like, just that alone can get someone hooked. Get just having, you know, Wes's break in it, and it's gone. That is catching people. And then, like, I don't know, people are liking the metal. I, I, it's really broke. It's really broken up into such different things that I'm I'm happy about. Is, is there one element within the record that you feel like drives the experience, either be the guitars or your vocals? Drive you mean like like to, makes it less than? No, like that pushes the record forward. They, that oh, becomes oh, oh. almost the motor of the album. Oh yeah. Um <sighs> I would say, I think it's just the the unexpected is my favorite part of the album. It's not so much that there's a specific thing you're listening for, but I think it's like what we were talking about before, how like Ulysses hits you and you're like, huh, okay. And the, just the progression of it. And, I, and, and I'm excited just to see people's reactions on the, 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 the title track, Sarcoma. Because to me, that's probably one of my favorites because it's just like, just a mean song. It just is a, that is a, I would say that and the, and the last track on the album are the two actual like death metal tracks on the record. And I'm just very excited to see, like, there's been such positive write-ups on 
these other tracks on their types of themes and stuff. But I just want to see the dynamic really work in effect. I want to see what people's full reactions are to like hearing a death metal rec death metal song and then 40 and then exponent. And then, like, it's just, you got 40 surrounded by two mosh songs. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's cool. It's cool to see it all mapped that way. Uh, you talked a little bit about your vocals, but I wanted to ask you <clears throat> how much did you prepare or how much of a game plan did you really have coming into the album? I mean, I mean, I'm I'm used to just doing the low gurgly stuff and you know low power. Like I'm I'm always in my head. I just try to be like you know corpse grinder and just having that power first and then tone second. Like for figuring out what's best for the part. Um, for game plan, a lot of it was just in the studio. Like we you know we had lyrics. I had the lyrics ready to go, and it was more of like okay, this is the pattern we have in mind, but what if I did this? What if I did this? And like John Douglas, who uh, produced it, he has on his wall, D-O-T-S, you know, don't overthink shit. So instead of sitting there going like, hmm, it might not work. I don't know. What he's like, try it. Like he, he's already, his finger's already on the record button. He's just already, like before you can even finish doing what you're talking about, like explaining it, he's like, just do it. It's better if you just show us what you're, what you're thinking about right now. What's the flow in your head? Um, and that was always our, our thing. Um, I think one of the, the best songs that explains that is the, uh, the putrid sunrise, uh, that song we were going to track the following day. Cause we were just burnt out. We tracked all day, the day prior. And, uh, I was kind of like just starting to explain what's in my head for that song. Cause it's more of like a thrashy hardcore song. It's talking about getting fucked up and hung over and just, you know, it's, it's a party song. And, uh, I remember just like, hey, plug me in for a second, you know, and I just, we did the whole first verse in one take, but it was, I was doing it as like a gag. I was just kind of like, I wanted to be pissed. I wanted to be in your face like this. And I remember he's, John hit stop or whenever, when we finished that part of the track and Wes was just laughing, going like, holy shit, that's awesome. That's <laughs> like, we just had a fun moment in the studio. We're like, all right, screw it. Let's go. Let's keep it going. And we pounded out that song that night. And just, it's, that's one of those things that we took away as a victory of like, oh yeah that's our game plan. We're just going to hit it. And when we know it's right, it's right. Like, don't, we're not going to mess with it too much. How, how much from the lyrics do you take on as trigger points in terms of knowing exactly where you're going to go with your voice? I think it's more just about the vibe of where we're at in terms of like, if it's a break, if it's the verse, if it's the, you know, what kind of, what, what is the lyrics actually saying? Like, that's something I would go back and forth with, with, with uh, Wes a lot was like, these lyrics right now, I'm talking about like grounding someone's bones into dust. I don't want that to be like a higher mid scream. I want that to be like, just, it's gotta be punchy. It's gotta be mean. Uh, conviction is the word. And I think, yeah, it's gotta be there. Otherwise, like, what are we doing? You know, um, you know, there's a, there's a hardcore band H2O. They have a song and one of their lyrics is, uh, what happens to the reason for screaming? And that's like one of the things that always sticks in my head. You know, all these bands are like a lot of bands, like, of course, great vocalists, great deathcore vocalists, great death metal vocalists, but the lyric content doesn't portray what he's doing. You know, that's like being in a nail salon screaming like, yeah, keep going. Like, it's like, it does the, <laughs> the context doesn't come across, you know, it's like, you sound scary, but what you're saying isn't for me. And I think for me, it's gotta be both. You gotta really have those, those points like you say, trigger points, it's got to be like really on the nose, you know, it's got to be mean. Like in, in the future at sunrise, there's that little break in the mid part of the song where it starts dwelling and gets all reverby. And that's like signifying that blackness in the morning of a hangover where you can't even open your eyes. You can't look outside. Like, and there's this demon in your blood. <laughs> yeah. It has a little bit of an introspective feel to it. The way it comes right. across, it, it feels like something that's coming from within but from within as a thought process, not from within necessarily like exteriorizing of course. what the thought process is. Of course. And that's actually what it is. And that's why the whole point on those low parts, when it, it starts tailing off in the end, until you start all over. And it's on the lows that we're just like, it's almost like a mini tease of a breakdown. And that next point, it comes right back with the thrash. That's signifying like the hair of the dog. You're back. It's like, yeah, you start over, just drink a beer again. You'll be right. You'll be fine. And then yeah. you're back on this, like, and it's, 
I think that's what we were trying to do is portray it. And that's the, the, the song is kind of like dictating what the sound should be instead of me going like, all right, I'm just going to do something high here. And it doesn't matter what you put here. Cause it'll work. I think it's, it shows that it works better if you work with the music than have it, you know, you just do whatever you want on over it, you know? It's, it's you serving the song, not the song working to serve your, your needs. Right, right, right. Well, did you have a specific track on this album that uh, gave you some gray hair? I mean, you don't have any gray hair, so I don't think that was one, but, but was there a, a <laughs> I do, actually. They're in there. If, if, hold <laughs> they're on, somewhere in there. Yeah, if I if I start digging in, you'll see all this. Oh, uh, there's a, there, there's a little bit of Richard Gear coming up. All right, so <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> was, was there um, a, a problematic track for you on on this record that took you a little bit longer to nail? Yes, and actually, it's a actually kind of a cool story. Uh, it came out to be a really good victory, and um, so Sugar Paper, the instrumental track on this record, was not intended to be an instrumental track. Originally, that song had lyrics on it, and we tracked it, and uh, it was cool. I just don't, like, it was one of those things where I was out at Wes's. I stayed there. We went to the studio every day for, like, what, I think it was a good part of two weeks. And uh, it was a great experience, but I remember that song, when it was finished, I had this feeling of, like, I want to go back. I want to fix something, but, like, I leave tomorrow. We should focus on the other stuff. I felt like rushed, but also like, ah, I'm just not sitting easy. There's, there was this part in the song. If you actually listen to it, all the song is still the same, just with no vocals on it. But um, there's that blast beat part. And the pattern we chose for it was sick, but I just, I couldn't, it, it, I was on, I locked into it, but it didn't feel good coming out of my mouth. Like it, like I was imagining it live and, on stage and I was just like, Wes, there's something about the song that's bothering me. And it's just, I, I can't, I don't even know how to fix it, but I, it's just not hitting me. Like it, like for like how we were talking about before, how we know, how I know what tone to put on a part, it wasn't resonating with me. So I didn't know what to respond yeah. to with it. So I, it, it was just kind of like me feeling like I'm putting just whatever sound there just cause it fits, you know, on a time grid, you know, but, um, so Wes sat with it. And then I think like a week or two later, he was like, kind of like, yeah, you're right. There is something weird about it. Like, it's just it, it, like when we were trying to figure out the sort order of the out of the tracks, that one was just like the sore thumb. You know, we didn't really fit anywhere the way we wanted. But then 40 Stories was our instrumental. That was the really? one that was supposed to be an instrumental. Wow. And then, that's an interesting story. Yeah. So so then what happened was we kind of like recycled bits that we had on sugar paper and like very little. I think we took like two words that like we, we liked where it went. Like, uh, you know, the part where he goes, uh, Be overthrow. Dun, 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 dun. and on that break where I start coming in, uh, there's a part in that song where, uh, the, the overthrow was going to be the name of that song. And it was going to be like this whole thing of like us overcoming our whatever, you know, and um yeah it just didn't stick with us and we were just like you know what we have an idea let's try this out and and that's where west stepped forward and was like i think i'm gonna try something hear me out and he started laying down vocals and i was like i like this like it was just like a on the cuff experience and this was already after i'd been home for a few weeks and he's like hey fly back up i want to try something i want to do some back and forth with you i was like fuck yeah dude i support this entirely and and the feeling we had when we left the studio was like, ah, yes, this is what we were trying to feel the first time, how it feels right. There's something like we were looking at each other in the car. You know, we were doing the car test. We got the bounce on the CD, put it in the car. And we were just like, this sounds insane. Yeah, if it sounds <laughs> Very good happy. in the car, it sounds good. Yeah, and it was just like, dude, for us, we were just like so stoked on what we just did. And, you know, I, I, I know for me, you know, the rest of the album was just kind of like a metal record. You know what I mean? There, there's um you know sleepers um is a really good standout song but that was going to be the only one you know that way we had a metal record and then one song that kind of has some singing parts and it was kind of like it feels a little unbalanced and then with 40 everything just felt right it felt like really symmetrical and it had a good flow and now sugar paper i find to be way cooler as an instrumental and it's got brandon from black dahlia murder on it doing the, the ending lead on it and it's just beautiful 
I, I think it almost works as a as a long interlude, if that's even a right. thing that you could right. call. Right, it's an intermission. Yeah, but it's a perfect track to connect what came before and to connect what comes after. It's just, it's just. We were talking before about the structure of the album and how important it is in order to give this fluidity to a record that's so diverse. I felt like that was a very perhaps underrated but very important song in the overall design of the record that song sure. needs to be there in order for the album to feel the way it does right right and it's like even in that instrumental it's very pretty it comes in a certain way and goes out a certain way you know it's like it kind of like ramps up to get this feeling and then by the top when you're at the top peak of that that's when it's doing the crazy blasts and stuff and it exits just as calm and it's just that that calm before the storm and then yeah. anodyne hits and we're just blasting in your face. You know? Yeah, and he's coming so, right back at it. Yeah, and that's how and it's just like we saved we saved the the biggest gun for last. And I think that was just all part of it. Like everything just fit. And I remember actually when we submitted it to the label, you know, they kind of helped us pick and choose which were going to be the singles. And even they were saying like this is tough. Like they like for for what you guys gave us, it's like each one has its own different sound. They can all be a single, honestly. It's hard to really sit here and pick. But um, yeah, the ones we chose are good because it still leaves more to wonder for the listener for when they listen yeah. to the full record. It, it still leaves a lot a lot of meat on the bone for to be discovered once people get the record on their hands and they start playing with it. The singles right. don't paint the full picture. They just kind of give all. you, there's just an appetizer. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I'm still like sitting here with the shit eating grin. <laughs> like I'm just, I'm just excited for like, like, I mean, look, I've been listening to it and tracking it and I'm just, I've become a fan of it, just of the idea of it. And like, you know, being cooped up in home at home all this time. And I know anyone in a band can relate. You're just kind of like waiting for that call to get back on the bus and sweat with your friends and go drinking at bars and just like be on the road and play all the, your, your favorite songs to like the best people. And like, this album has just been like digging at me because it's like even though the press is talking about whatever songs and and it's playing we're pl we're getting played on liquid metal which is super cool shout out to jose Mangan and and just everybody and it's so sick but it's still not even there yet like we don't even have the meat out yet and i'm excited to see how that gets responded to i think you guys have for whatever it's worth i think you guys have a phenomenal record on your hands one of the best albums to come out this month and therefore is going to be one of the best albums that 2021 is going to have to offer to metalheads out there this is just that. solid solid record you guys blew me out of the water with this album like i said you guys were throwing me to the ropes and just giving me punches to the head to the gut like all over <laughs> the place but you know what when it was done i wanted to i wanted to go for a second so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad, man. There's, there's more for the picket, man. And I just, and I'm so excited that I know I just even talking with Wes every, every day, we're just like, he's just like, I can't wait to just have this be over with in, in the best way. It's not in a bad way. It's more of just like, I can't wait till like, there's no more, like, like they're working on the tab books. We're working on like, you know, playthrough videos and, you know, I'm going to be doing live stream stuff on my Twitch, um, you know, on the 28th. Uh, that's i'm just gonna do a little shameless plug twitch.tv yeah, yeah. slash kev muller um may 28th i don't know when this is coming out but may 28th i'm doing a live stream for the album coming out i'm going to be performing some of the songs online as well as uh in the future when shows happen i'll be live streaming it right from my twitch account so it'll be a good portal to check out the band and my social media at kev muller on pretty we'll, much we'll everything put all, we'll put all the uh, that information on the description of the video awesome. so everybody can can check out not just the band but can check out everything that you you've been up to and awesome. let's face the facts you, you got to pay for that uh home decor somehow so uh <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, whatever yeah. we can do to help you out <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that but yeah man i mean we're very excited and um dude uh, yeah it's just we we're it, there's just so much left to show and oh well, what i was saying was um once this is all done and we don't have to like campaign for this anymore, Wes is already like, yeah, I got songs. He's like, he, I, he's got two songs already in his head that he wants to start like crunching out. I got two demo tracks. He sent me back before I really even committed to the band. He was like, yeah, this is kind of what I'm going for. And he even forgot about those songs. And I sent them to him yesterday. And he was like, oh, all right. Yeah, we'll use that. <laughs> so yeah, it's more material. Yeah, dude. And, it, and it's super cool. Because again, um, we have we have the chugs, we have the big chorus, we have the, we try to give. I'm trying, I'm trying to give you that hostility still. Like I, no, I, I think, I think you guys with this album, you're you're a breath of fresh air. 
to the whole death metal sound, to the whole death metal scene in terms of what you guys put together on this album. I, I think in, in the future, bands will look at this record and see the, the, the blueprint of, of how you attack an album within a genre that's perhaps a little bit uh, overplayed or that's, there, there's just too much of the same happening. Yeah, there's a and, lot. And, and this album really sets the blueprint on how you can still create a brutal record and have so much diversity in it. Yeah, and I appreciate that very much, man. And I'm really, I, I hope everyone agrees. And I, I, I look forward to the responses and I look forward to seeing people at shows and it's super cool. And um, yeah, I can't wait to do more. Well, Kevin, thank you very much for your time. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in my hometown of Toronto at some point in time. Hopefully yeah, you guys are still future. super locked up though, huh? Yeah, we're still all uh, under lockdown and it looks like it's going to last for a couple more weeks. But Dang. vaccines are rolling in. I actually, I'm going to take my son today to get his first shot. Oh, nice. So so there's some some light at the end of the tunnel. I just hope it's not your tour bus. Uh, well, <laughs> I actually, I do hope it's your tour bus. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would mean that we have shows. But uh, I hope to see you guys on the road soon because this yeah. is an album that I'm dying to see uh, how it's going to transport into a live setting, you know? Yeah, I mean, we do have people talking to us. I, things are getting booked. It's just a matter of if they stay booked, you know, uh, just with different countries and different states with different rules. And like, look at me. I got both shots. I'm ready to go. I got my little, my, my this is my own personal backstage pass. Um, but it'll get me to all the restaurants I want to go to. Um but yeah, dude, I, I I I see a I see a good future coming in the next few months, even because shows are starting to happen here in the states. Uh, they st <laughs> some of them started illegally, but it, what's funnier is that like the news kind of was like, oh, super spreader events, blah blah blah, and there really hasn't been any sort of reaction. Like there hasn't been any new cases or waves or things, and it's kind of like everyone just jumped at it and said, oh, it's it's fine. Oh, oh, okay. All right, cool. And now, like, I think Connecticut as of what's today, the 19th? The 19th. No, yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday, uh, to yesterday, Connecticut went mask free. Jersey is still on the fence about it, but kids are going back to school in the next coming, whenever the next school season. I'm so lost in the years, but um, no more online classes as an option. It's just you have to, you have, if you want school, you got to go. And I think that's, I, I, I'm not on the side of who to say what's a good idea, but I, I'm just happy that there's moves being made. And yeah, that's yeah. a sign a little, for us to be able to do something a, in the near future. A little bit future. of a sense of normalcy, things going back to right. the, way, you know, the, the way they were. I, I'm just looking forward to that. Yeah. Well, man, yeah. thank you very much for your time. This was an absolute blast, man. It was a pleasure talking to you, talking about the music, talking about the new album. Hey, likewise. Uh, all, all the best, man. All the best for the release. I, I wish you guys nothing but greatness. And, and I just hope everybody loves this record as much as I did listening to it. Hey, man, I appreciate that. Very, very kind words by a very kind man. And uh, I, hope to, I hope to hear more of you in the future. No, oh, hope you have a good day. For sure. If you guys come to town, you're going to see me there. 100%. Oh, hell yeah. You're going to see my sweaty, bouncy tits on that front row. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. All right, man. <laughs> yeah, you, you seem thrilled. You seem thrilled. Oh, I'm ready. I want you shirtless, front row. I'll bring you, I'll, I'll grab you up by your tits and throw you off the stage. <laughs> we'll get you stage diving. It'll be sick. <laughs> it'll be sick. It'll be sick. Well, Kevin, thank you very much for your time. All the best. And uh, we'll stay in touch. Take care. All right. Take it easy, buddy. See you, man.